Jesus says, seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness. He said, all these things shall be added. I will not waste my life pursuing the addition. There is a place where men stand and their feet become like immortal creatures. And so long as the earth subsist, their all chances will remain as a covering and as a law. In another world entirely, where is functioning by revelation is a realm where sickness cannot exist. Those are the kinds of dimensions that men like John G. Lake handled. And the plague that others are trusting God not to contact. When the plague touch him, the plague die. The virus touch him, the virus die. It's not something to hear and just start shouting and say, if I touch the virus, it will die. It depends on the world where you are walking in. Because when you enter revelation, revelation becomes a civilization. A man who said, that same spirit that is in me, quickens my mortal body, doesn't pray for healing. That man walks in divine health. If you ask him about sickness, he will laugh at you. It's a different world entirely. So there is a difference between quoting a scripture and walking in revelation. Revelation is a spectrum. For those of you who study science, you know that this white light you see is not white. This white light you see is a combination of seven colors. When the light passes through a spectrum, it will divide into seven. You will be shocked to see red inside this white light. You will be shocked to see green inside this white light. When you are quoting isolated scripture, it's like picking the individual lights in the spectrum. But a man who has revelation has embodied the whole light. And so if he finds you operating at a lower revelation, he knows that's what helps your faith. He will allow you, but when you want to grow, you will move from there. Because the time will come when, if you are doing kingdom business, you can't afford to waste time praying to be healed. Because there are territories you will enter that your first step will be with sickness and death. There are places God will send you to and it will be plagued. You need to carry something that makes you live above the realm of sickness to be able to do kingdom there. If you, are, if you have not come to that level of revelation, then your work with God will be limited. And so what God designed when he made us was for us to function in the realm of the glory. And in the realm of the glory, you don't call on God to come and answer the question. In the realm of the glory, you become the reflector of God. Anything you touch, God touch. Anything you say, God says. At that level, you operate in the rulership dimension. And so when the devil came, he was smart. He didn't take food from the man. He knows if he takes food from the man and the glory is there, the man may not even need to eat. Because Moses was in the glory and for 40 days he didn't eat and he didn't notice. And so if the devil came to take fruit or food from the man, the man may not have noticed because in the glory you may not even be hungry. So the devil may keep the food for a lifetime and the man may not even notice. Why? Because in the glory you live beyond time. When the devil keeps food for 100 years, the man may think it's one second. And maybe he eats after six hours. That means the devil will keep that food for 6,000 years before the man notices. So the devil is smart. When the devil came, he didn't take anything that was material from the man. He went for the one thing that makes the man operate like a god. He went for the glory. And the moment the man lost the glory, he lost everything. If you like, give him food, he will need food again. If you like, give him money, he will need money again. Because this time around, it was not just about what he handled. It was a vacuum in his soul. A hole has been created in his soul that makes him desire things other than God. Some of the things you pray for, for three days, to get an answer. Somebody has prayed for it for one minute. Your three days prayer is a declaration on the lips of another man. Whereas, there are those who don't declare. The moment they think it, it happens. What has happened is measures. Because the three days prayer is to push out glory. Because you know, when the river flows, everything will be answered. You know what the Bible said in Ecclesiastic 11.3? He said, when the heavens are full of rain, they empty themselves on the earth. So the calamity you are going through, when you begin to mature, instead of just running to somebody, pray for me. When the calamity comes, you go and lock the door. Because you know what that person carries, you do carry it. The only difference is that he has it in higher measures. And so what you want to do is that, I don't just want the problem to be solved. I want my measure to increase so that the problem will not come again. And so instead of running to an apostle, running to a prophet, you enter your room and you shut the door. You say, this crisis is here because my measure is limited. And you bend on your knees like Elijah. Ka, 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 ra, ka, ka. What you are doing, you are staring. A point will come. As you pray for a while, you will discover three things will happen. Number one, the atmosphere will change. Because the Bible said, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High abides under the shadow of the Almighty. Because when you begin to engage the glory on your inside, you will discover that the glory will become a doorway. The door is to bring you to the secret place. 
The secret place is not behind closed door. The secret place is the covering of the Shekinah. And what will take you there is prayer. And so many times when you have a crisis, you know the crisis is overwhelming you because the Shekinah has not come. When the Shekinah rested on Israel, the Bible said they walked through the wilderness for 40 days. He said there was no people among their tribe. He said their clothes and their sandals grew with them. They had no need of buying clothes because the glory cost everything to respond accordingly. So you are going through that problem because the measure is limited. And so instead of just running for an answer, you get something more than the answer. But you will never think of it except as you know that the power to do the, the same thing that the apostle is doing is also resident on your inside. So when you come to listen to the apostle, you are not waiting for the apostle to beg a decree over you only. You are trying to find out what does this man know that has caused his measure to increase. And so thank God for the answer I'm receiving today. But I will not continue receiving answers. We want to stir a fountain that is on our inside. There is a river here. If all you have are the things that are imparted you, it means you have not come into your reality. There is a stream that should flow from your bowels. The Bible said on the last day of the feast, he said Jesus stood and cried. He said they that believe out of their bellies shall flow rivers, not a river, many rivers. Some of you, the river that will flow from you will be the fire that will purge the nations. Even kings will hear you and they will tear their garments and weep in repentance. The Bible said, when Jonah entered Nineveh and he cried, not only men repented, he said even animals fasted in Nineveh. Because when that man cries, his voice is a water. It will bait you and it will transform you. It will alter your molecular structure and a nation can repent because somebody cried. His voice has become an echo from eternity. When he all passes his oracle over a city, he washes that city of iniquity. There are dimensions we carry that cannot be quantified, but we have allowed ourselves to be trapped in the flesh. That's why Paul said, no, we know man after the flesh. No matter how decorated flesh is, flesh is still flesh. What defines you are the fragrances of glory that flows from your inside. And I will not stop until something comes out of me. I will not stop until something comes out of me. My voice will become a lake of fire. It will punch men on earth and judge them as though they are in Hades. When they hear, they will be changed. Because it's a river that God plants on your inside. Some of you, your voice will become a bomb in Gilead. When you speak, broken hearts shall be mended. Some of you, your voices will become healing to nations. And this is why God kept you here. Else, as you gave your heart to Christ, you would have gone to heaven. Why then are you on earth? If the earth cannot taste of the waters that come from your spirit. Did you not know why the Bible said God seeketh worshippers? The reason God is seeking worshippers is because the only water God drinks is the one that flows from the heart of man. It's an ancient river. He planted it there and is waiting for that river to overflow the banks so that he can quench his taste. That's why when God doesn't find men, he seeks them. In Deuteronomy 32 verse 9, he said the Lord's heritage is his people. The only thing that quenches the taste of God is the heart of man. And so that river is what quenches God's taste. When your heart opens up in worship, you begin to overflow Zion. And God too can drink. He can drink of a water that knows no corruption. Because that heart is one with him. That's the water he seeks. So a time comes when you seek God until God begins to seek you. And God will chase after you. He will chase after you like a bride without spot and wrinkle. Why do you think Moses could come to God and say, if you will not forgive them, blot my name out of the book of life? There are men God can no longer let go because their heart quenches his taste. And Jesus said, the Father is seeking worshippers. He's seeking them because out of their bellies a river flows. That river does not only water nations, that river also quenches the taste of God. When God wants to drink, he seeks the heart of man. This is why we, we bask in the spirit. He said, be not drunk with wine. Wherein his excess be filled with the spirit. Let something flow from your inside. When I was a child, 90% of my call was to get something from my father. But my father took time to invest in me to become a man. And now that I'm a man, he knows every time I beckon, it's because I want to talk. And sometimes I travel for hours and go to meet my dad and we just sit down and talk. And sometimes we are not talking any serious thing. We are just talking. And when we talk for a while, we walk around the house. And he shows me some of the projects he wants to do. I say, okay, don't worry. Tomorrow I will send money. 
Uh, yes, keep your money. The training you put here is now generating money. And even though he has a little to handle the project, he will happily keep his money back and wait for me to send money. And when I send the money, it's not because he needs it. When I send the money, it, it gives him joy that his son is responsible. Those things are deeper than attending to our needs. And so when you find a generation always coming to God for intervention, something is wrong. He didn't design it that way. And so tonight, I want to show you the reason we are teaching and actively engaging on the subject of praise and thanksgiving. Because that level of authority that makes you be able to live and advance God's purpose without bothering God to come into the matter is tied to some of these secrets. You know, we had stories growing up many years ago how that the witches in Benin gathered together and said there will be a global meeting of witches. And when they told Benson Dahosa, you know, you, when you hear stories, you, you, you enjoy them. But you don't know what makes that level of power to be with a man. And when they told Benson Dahosa, he said, well, go and tell them it will not hold. I said so. He didn't say, by the help of God. He said, it will not hold. And then the head of the witch he said, he is bluffing. If he likes, he should pray all he knows to pray. They will hold the meeting and do what they want. And then the house say, I will not pray. It's not everything you pray about. I don't need to pray to get a cab home. I have money in my pocket. He said, I will not pray. But go and tell them. I, I think the witch said, even if God comes down, the meeting will hold. He said, what? He said, God doesn't need to come down. He said, I am here. And as if that was not enough, he organized a national challenge with the head of the witches. And when they came for the meeting, and they began to speak, the witch said the meeting will hold. And Bessie the also looked at him and said, you are not even a witch. He said, if you say you are a witch now, I will kill you. And on national television, the man who was bluffing said, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Nobody prayed to Jesus. Nobody prayed to the Father. Nobody called on the name of the Lord. Somebody that knew authority stood and said, God doesn't need to come. I am here. And that was what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1. He said, be a followers of me. Even as I am the follower of Christ. That means in case you don't see Jesus, when you see me, you are seeing him. That's what God wants us to do. But all of these possibilities operate in an economy that we call the economy of the glory. When the glory is present, the glory does not just come to address need. The glory comes to make men become like God. But he said, he took Pastor Chris somewhere when they were in California. And there's this family, this lady was paraplegic for many years. He goes to serve her communion. They are beautiful things. And you know how anointed Benihim is. He said, offer her communion, pray for her every day. And so when Pastor Chris visited him, they were going to see Billy Graham. And he said, okay, let them, they should just pass by because he needed to pray for the woman so that they would just see her quickly before they go to Billy Graham. And when they came, Pastor Chris said, she can walk now. <laughs> Many him now lowered his voice and said, We've been praying for a long time. Pastor Chris said, No, she can walk now. You want to walk now? The lady couldn't even nod. And when he showed up, he opened another vista. You know, all of us have different corridors. Many him flows by the anointing. But in addition to the anointing, Pastor Chris has faith. And Pastor Chris has discernment of spirits. So, in addition to the anointing, he can tell. If what is happening to you is natural or if a demon is involved and the moment he, he looked at the woman <laughs> he looked at the woman and he saw the demon that was holding her neck get out there and instantly the demon left the woman stood up when he knelt down and began to cry not because it's not anointed but god designs the glory so that we can honor ourselves god designs the glory so that we can value ourselves so I can come and pray. People are impacted. Somebody has praised. People are healed. Somebody has praised. People prosper. So you now discover that the body of Christ is indeed the body of Christ. Because the church is not a beauty. Because some of you can be the hand of God. Another person can be the leg of God. Another person can be the mind of Christ. Because we have become an organism in the spirit. When we enter the glory, we become different dimensions of the Christ. And so when a man has not yet found his dimension in the spirit, he is a body to the church. And this is why we raise men to come to capacity. 
because at the end of the day all of us must come to our reality those of you who are the eyes of the church if you don't come to your reality the church will be blind for many years because nobody can look and say this is the perspective of god restore the reason you go to certain nations and there is captivity there is darkness there is corruption is because that church may have the arm of god so there is power but they don't have the eyes of god and so every day cripples are walking dead men are rising but they need seers they need those who know the way of the spirit and because they don't know it they will be moving in power but they'll be confused until the eyes begin to rise this is why the church of the last day is not a church of one man no i'm too limited to lead the body of christ we need an army to rise so that sometimes when we are seeking the counsel of god like first chronicles 2020 while we are yet fasting the spirit of god can fall upon someone and they say in this battle you don't need to carry spears and arrows in this battle carry those who are the singers let them go first and all they need to say is that the lord reigns and his glory endureth forever and as they are singing it in the spirit angels will begin to fight because if we fight in this battle we will lose because they, they see us have shown up if the church does not come to maturity we will be defeated and the second thing that activates the glory they are the sounds of worship the reason we call it a month of worship and praise it's not because we want to be excited. It's because we want to trouble a river that is on our inside. Because when you come under the glory, you are not coming to receive what Jesus was giving. You are actually coming to become like the Jesus that gave. But for you to understand how the glory economy works, Jesus needed to show you. And so when somebody dies, Jesus comes here and says he's asleep. That means in the glory realm, you can't die. Because death does not exist there. And in the glory realm, the second thing you need to understand is that whatever you call a situation, that's what it is. Remember, when Adam was in Eden, the Bible said whatever name he called the animals, that was the name thereof. In the glory, anything you call anything becomes that thing. And so you can be going through crisis and you said, no, this is journey to greatness. Wait for a while. You will discover that that thing that was called crisis will become the reason for your lifting. You can be going through pains and people look at you and say, no, God is working on me because there is a power coming on my life. And after a while, you will go out and people will see power that they cannot explain because in the glory, two things happen. Death does not exist. And whatever you call a situation, that's what it is. And so when Lazarus died, Jesus said, let's go and wake him up. And Thomas said, hey, in the name of men, if somebody dies, he's gone. We cry out our heart. When we are done crying, we bury him. And Jesus said, no, he's not dead, he's asleep. In the realm of glory, men don't die. And so when Jesus walked there, they say, oh, if you were here, he would not have died. Because in the realm of mortars, there is such a thing as too late. But in the realm of the glory, time does not exist. So there is no too early and there is no too late. The reason is because whatever you call it, that's what it is. And so any time you come is the right time. And so Jesus showed up and said, have I not told you before? If thou wouldest believe. He didn't say thou shouldest see the resurrection. He didn't say thou shouldest see healing. He said if thou wouldest believe. Thou shouldest see the glory of God. Because in the glory anything is possible. Healing exists there. Resurrection exists there. And because they wouldn't listen. He pushed them aside. And he went to the front of the tomb. And he said Lazarus comfort. And the Bible said he that was dead. Came back to life. Some of you who are going through pains now. You are calling on God. Father please look at my trouble. And he's looking at you. No. Your trouble is not the problem. You have not found the glory. If you find the glory, that your trouble will become the reason for your manifestation. Because you will learn how to give commandments. Because that thing you call problem, you were designed to command it. That's why I said, I've seen an abomination upon the face of the earth. He said, princes are walking. White slaves are riding on horses. Because the things that we should command are the things we are calling on God for. The things that we should change are the things that are frustrating us. When you walk in the glory, every crisis becomes a potential testimony. When you walk in the glory, every crisis becomes an opportunity to reveal God. Because the, the easiest way to receive, reveal God is to talk about Him. There are better ways of revealing God. When Jesus wanted to reveal God in Canaan, He waited. The Bible said, the wine was out. Uh -huh. That time, I cannot reveal God in a way that a fake person cannot reveal God. And He said, feed the jars and fill them to the brine. And when they filled the jars, He didn't pray. Because in the glory, whatever you call it, that's what it is. He said, fetch from the jar, take it. To the governor of the field you don't try why don't you start with your disciples you want to embarrass yourself you are testing something and you are starting with the governor of the field take it there the one who is talking walks in the glory and when they took it to the governor of the field and he's drunk he said what is wrong with you men usually take the best wine first but you have kept the best wine until we are tired of drinking why did you do this because 
one of the wines was brewed on a tree the other one was brewed in the glory realm the wine from the glory realm when you drink it it doesn't stop in the ceremony you carry it from the ceremony and the wine begins to change you you may drink that wine and after a while you go home and you find yourself you know say, what are you doing you know he said be not drunk with wine wherein is excess but be filled because the wine of the flesh is alcohol but the wine of the glory is the holy ghost that means when the man shows up god has come anything you are looking for the moment that man comes that man provides it and when you look at the man you will know that this man doing this thing is doing it by something else that is hidden and so when you meet the man the man now leads you to the God that is hidden on his inside. This is why he said, this is the mystery of this age. In Colossians 1.26, he said, Christ in you, the hope of glory. So what God did was, he hid himself into the man and allowed the man to manifest him. And so when you touch the man, you touch the God that is on his inside. But when the man loses the ability to host and manifest God, every time he has a problem, he goes back to call on God to come and handle the matter and God will go back. But what God wanted to do is to be trapped in the man. So that when the man handles the problem, God handles the problem. When the man deals with the matter, God deals with the matter. Unfortunately, he didn't understand what God was creating. He didn't know that God wanted to talk, but he wanted to talk through the man. He didn't know that God wanted to walk wonders, but he wanted to walk wonders through the man. So the man still thinks that God wants to come out and manifest himself and go back. He knows how to manifest himself. And he did that for aeons before the angels. If you study heaven in Revelation 4 and 5, the Bible says God appears on the throne by himself. God doesn't manifest in heaven through any agency. God manifests in heaven by himself. And for aeons, no angel has been able to look upon him. The moment he appears, they fall on their faces. So it was impossible for God to have relationship with them. And so this time around, he is not intending to manifest by himself. What he wants to do is to manifest through you. So you become the theater that gives expression to God. It will remain as a testimony for mortals so that when you walk the face of the earth, even when their names are mentioned, you will know that men walk with God. And those, those fellowships will become a heritage for a generation. And even in times when we can't see God anymore, we will latch onto their prophecies and their prophecies will become pathways of deliverance. The Bible said between Malachi and John, it said there was darkness according to church history but they held on to the writings of Isaiah. We may not have heard God anymore, but there are signs in Zion. The men that walk with God, their footprint still remain in heaven as gateways. And when we can't find God, we will see the things they said. We will look upon their walk with God and it will become verdicts of deliverance. How do you think you can live your own life casually? No. If we only breathe and eat, then we are not different from animals. But there is something beyond the sky is the walk of glory so that when you finish your sojourn on the earth you can say as it is so are we in this world not when we go there as it is so are we in this world because you have gone to where fellowship exists beyond time there is a glory locked on your inside poor God in the treasure he said we have this treasure in empty vessels that the excellency shall be of God and not of man. Peter said, We yeah, are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, God's own special people, called forth to showcase the excellencies of God. Those are the many tributaries of glory. When men touch you, they should find something that is immortal, they should find something that money cannot buy. That's when even the princes can speak concerning you. They will say, Jesus, we know. But now we don't only know Jesus. He said, Paul also, we know. Because he's no longer of the flesh. He has come from another tribe. A tribe in Zion. The business of the glory is the reason we gather. As I'm laboring in the glory, different tributaries are opening. While I honor those who carry those graces, I stir the waters of my spirit. Because I don't want to go to Lagos all the time when I need faith. I don't want to go to Lagos all the time when I need healing. There is a place where the glory becomes a river. And what it does is to swallow infirmities. And so when I lock my door behind closed doors, it's because I heard 
that the same apostle today that is leading people in stadia what he did was to lock himself so me too i lock myself when i hear that there is a crisis and somebody spoke and things changed i'm not just interested in the fact that he spoke i want to find out what did he do what did he do what did he do i heard that andrew womack's son died and they put him in the morgue for 45 minutes in the mortuary 45 minutes they had tidied him up and when they told Andrew Womack, your son is dead, immediately he said he wanted to weep. And the Lord told him, if you cry, he's gone. Because if you cry, it means you have moved into the flesh. Stay in the spirit. And instead of crying, the man began to meditate on scripture. And when he meditated on scriptures for 40 minutes, he said, where is he? And he went there and said, get up. And his son came back to life. After 45 minutes in the mortuary, that's what moves me. I am happy when Andrew Womack prayed for me. But much more than the prayer, I want to find out what do you do. And so when I hear that where men cry, he doesn't cry, he meditates. The next thing, if there's a challenge, I stop myself from crying. Me too, I begin to meditate. Because if one can do it, all can do it. He sent his word to Jacob. He lightened upon Israel. This is the hallmark of the teaching ministry. To show you the secret that brings you there. Because if you don't know the secret, you'll be a babe forever. You will always need a man. And the point will come, men will become your God. Because when one man carries the glory, he begins to do what God can do. And if you too don't carry the glory for all of us to live as God, serving the living God, you will discover that you will be a man in the league of gods. And so you will have no choice but to serve all your life. Are you following? As I am now, if I want to stir fire here, I don't need the keyboard. I have seen where fire dwells in the spirit. I have seen it. I have seen it. And in the place of prayer, I have been carried to show me my glory garment. And when they took me there, people don't come in the flesh. People come in their spiritual reality. And when I saw myself, I was burning with flames. And so I can go to a place, the atmosphere can be cold. I don't care. I come with my own atmosphere. I can change it anytime. Because I have seen what I look like in the spirit. It's a technology of the glory. There are many people that what they carry in the spirit are oils. So they are like bombs in Gilead. They can tell you the situation is without hope. Wait until they show up. Sometimes they don't even need to come. They will send their handkerchief. What they told you, seven prophets have prayed. Five apostles have prayed. When a man who flows oil comes. My and then suddenly you discover your hand is becoming hot. And what what, what means is this? And as you are speaking in tongues, somebody said, I have pain on my back. I don't know what happened. You say, sorry, it's well. And then as you go, you say, wait, oh. as you touch me, the pain is gone. What happened? The glory, the wine is still at work. Because this wine flows the Holy Ghost out. That's why I said, they that believe, out of their bellies shall flow rivers of living waters. Now, what Jesus was doing was that he was teaching us who a man is. The life of Jesus is a revelation of who a man is, not who a God is. Because everything about creation reveals God. The life of Jesus is actually a revelation of who a man is. That's why when he finished in John 14, 12, he said, greater works than this shall ye do. Greater works than this. That means what I came to do is to teach you how to live and go and check the whole life of Jesus. There was never a time when Jesus stood and said, Father, please intervene. Because you can pray and be defeated. Because when we pray, what we want to do is to come into our elements. Those who are, 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 are who carry the sword, when prayer becomes intense, then they begin to judge. You'll find God begin to put walls in their mouth and they begin to cut off the tongue of the Leviathan. Meanwhile, after they finish judging, those who see will need to come and say, this is what the Lord wants us to do and give us strategy. When they finish, those who carry the hand of, of wealth, the oil of wealth, they will show up and sponsor what God wants to sponsor. Then you discover that the church becomes invincible. This is when the glory of righteousness will be clothed. But there is no emphasis on growth. Jesus has come and done everything. He has made you become like him. But you can't draw the glory. One of the ways to draw the glory is by prayer. Because when you pray, you come under the shadow. When you grow under the shadow, a point will come when you will move from under the shadow. You will come into the different places in Christ. The Bible said in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 that God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So there are those who don't wait for the shadow. They go to meet the shadow. As they pray for a while, they go to heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Did you not read the life of John? He said, I, John, your brother, in tribulation. I was among the captives. No, not captives. He said, I was in the eye called Patmos in Revelation 1 verse 10. And he said, I heard a sound 
as of a trumpet. And as I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. So the cloud was coming to him. In verse 4, he said, I heard the same voice that spoke to me. And a door opened in heaven. And he said, come up here. So there is a realm. As you are doing business with the glory, the cloud comes upon you. When the cloud comes, suddenly inspiration comes. You hear, buy this land. Buy that land. And then you buy those lands when everybody is running. And the land begins to appreciate as you are praying, the cloud comes, your hand begins to burn. And after a while, you discover you begin to heal the sick. Then the time comes, you move from under the cloud, you enter the heavenly places. At that time, you don't only receive those inspirations, you can see everything and pick the one you want to do. I can come for a miracle service now because I function under the cloud. And God can tell me, teach today, I will heal the sick. I can come tomorrow, God tells me, dance, I will heal the sick. But there is a realm you get to. You are not waiting for the voice anymore. You live where the voice lives. Did you read about Daniel? He said when he showed up, they didn't tell him anything was wrong. But when he entered the palace and he looked, he said, oh, God exalted you. And instead of honoring God, you decided to worship the God of iron. He said, therefore, this hand is come. Mene, mene. They couldn't even read it. How did he know the language? That means where the hand came from, he goes there. He knows the language of that nativity. He doesn't only live among men and men anymore. Once upon a time, he said there is a God that revealed a secret. So he needed to go and pray for the secret to be revealed to Daniel in a night vision. But the time came, he sits where the secrets are uttered. And so he doesn't need to go and fast and pray and sleep for the secret to come. When he shows up, he begins to interpret it. Mene, mene, take care of a sin. He said, you have been weighed in the balances of the spirit. And he said, tonight, the armies of the Medes and the Persians say, we overrun your kingdom. And come rain, come shine, it must happen. Because the man who is speaking, he walks where the glory dwells. Oh, there's a place where the glory is a pillar. And so those who come there, they worship him and they know him as they are known. Because for them, God is no longer a message. God is a person that they mingle with and they have intercourse with him night and day. I heard a story that turned me on. Once upon a time, a man had an encounter with Jesus and Jesus came to him. And when Jesus spoke to him, he didn't understand what Jesus said. And Jesus told him, go to be humble. He will explain to you. What do you mean? How can you meet Jesus and he's sending you to another man? The same way, Paul met Jesus and he sent him to Ananias. He said, go into the city. You'll be told what to do. Because what is happening to you now is a reality under the cloud. But there are those who come to heaven. There are those who are part of the council of heaven. Because before the world passes away, the elders of this generation will be numbered. So you will learn. You will learn. You will learn. You will learn. You will learn.